uh, when Our Lady appeared, it read 300,000, the equivalent to the center of a nuclear bomb. Woo! She's powerful. Mama, mama, mama. And so Our Lady is as powerful as any nuclear bomb or a cluster of nuclear bombs. And she says that our prayers are just as powerful and we need to put our trust in praying the rosary. She said our rosary should become our life. It can work miracles in the world, as you know, because she's said that many times, and in our lives. Again, it's the most powerful Marian prayer on earth. Um, there are uh, some, uh, again, why is the rosary important? As Dominic, said, Dominic said that you know an important part of the rosary is because of the indulgence attached to it and the power of it helping souls out of purgatory. Uh, the famous exorcist, Father Gabriel Amart, God rest his soul, he, um, he said, one day a colleague of mine heard the devil say, during an exorcism, Saying Hail Mary is like a blow on my head. If Christians knew how powerful the rosary was, it would be my end. Padre Pio called the rosary an extraordinary powerful weapon against Satan. The rosary is the weapon for these times. An Italian exorcist says that the rosary puts the devil in a frenzy. Um, he doesn't even like the fact that people are in purgatory, even though they're saved. He's crazy. He really is crazy. Um, but, but he said that, uh, that the rosary, this exorcist, said that the, it's, the rosary is like putting an electrified fence around your house. Uh, so you don't need ADG. I don't know if you have ADG here, but we've got it in the United States. You don't need that. So um, another, uh, another uh, comment about the rosary was Mother Teresa had a vision. She had three visions, actually, saved Mother Teresa. And one of the visions, she saw the poor and the suffering kneeling near Our Lady. And she heard the Blessed Mother say, take care of them. They're mine. Bring them to Jesus. Carry Jesus to them. Fear not. Teach them to say the rosary, the family rosary, and all will be well. Jesus and I will be with you and your children. Pick up the rosary and pray the rosary for your children and for your deceased loved ones. Our great mission is in Mary's hands. Our conversion is in Mary's hands. Peace in the world is in her hands. The unity of the family, the protection of life, young people are in Mary's hands. Therefore, we must come with those two great Marian instruments, the rosary and the scapular, and you'll see how people will change. And I've got the scapular. I took it off only for, for, for a few moments. I've got one, and I wear, I wear the five-fold scapular. The I, I need heavy protection. And Char Vance, a good friend of mine, said, hey, it's fire insurance. This is good fire insurance. So the rosary, be, I can always carry extra ones with me. You don't know where you're going to be, if you're going to be in the hospital. In fact, Father Sylvia from EW10 said, when you're in the hospital, make sure that you have blessed objects around. Um, he said, you have to be covered there, too. And be sure to have masks up for yourself when, you know, when you're going under procedure or take advantage of the sacrament of the sick. But, you know, when somebody is dying, be sure there's a holy picture. Be sure there's blessed, you know, blessed, uh, holy, there's holy water, uh, the rosary. These are very powerful weapons to help that person transition. But the rosary, uh, the rosary, the scapular, um, you'll see how people will change with these two instruments. John Paul was never without the rosary. He wore the scapular his whole life, even during surgery. Benedict loved the rosary. Pope Francis, um, uh, uh, his papacy was dedicated to Our Lady of Fatima. The rosary, the rosary, the rosary. So that was another, another fruit of um, the rosary. Our Lady repeatedly tells us that peace will come through prayer, especially the rosary. Um, and she, you know, there was a, a comment about this, uh, and again, I mentioned, what about the recession? And she said that the recession is in our hearts. And when we, re we end the recession in our hearts, the recession in the world will end. Recession, inflation, whatever. It has to start with us. So it starts with the rosary. And I just want to comment about this. Sacramentals are very important. As, as Al, I, I, what he's saying is, be sure your children are carrying, their, I did some research, three powerful medals of the church. Our first is the scapular. And now, um, the one I just took out of my pocket, now they're putting the Benedict medal, you now the double chasing medal with the exorcism prayer attached to the medal. That's, that's the, that's a number, number one is the scapular, the most powerful uh, sacramental. Number two, is the miraculous medal because of the graces that are attached to it. And number three is the Benedict medal with the exorcism blessing. And as I said, now they're putting it, uh, they're attaching it to your scapular. And I like the, this is a fivefold. These are different scapulars our lady gave to um, saints for particular orders um, that are attached to it. Um, and it's a, it, it just lasts forever and you can wash it. It, uh, it just never falls apart. It's our lady. She's, she's got heavy duty mantle. 
it's made of steel, it's made of heavy iron. She's a powerful woman, powerful lady. Now, so that was another fruit. So we've got what? We've got the mass. We've got the stations that help the souls. We've got the rosary that helps the souls. Um, and so uh, we, we came up with some other books that they wanted to know. Oh, the rosary, yes, of course. The devil hates Latin and he hates scripture. So this was probably the most powerful book I've done, the, the rosary for the souls of purgatory. Every purgatory passage and reference are in this book. So um, this is, they're all extremely popular, but, but I know in a very special way, uh, this carries a lot of power and weight uh, for, for ourselves and for the souls of purgatory. Um, another book we came out with, uh, we talked about praying the saints. If you want to know what the saints experienced and their revelations and what they said to them, we have praying with the saints for the souls of purgatory. Another super popular book. We have something, um, we put together all the prayers of the church praying for the souls of purgatory. They're not arbitrary prayers. These are the prayers that are given down to us from generation to generation that help the souls. And in a very special way in this book, we did a special section on the sick, the suffering, and the dying. What do you do when somebody is sick, suffering, or dying? What prayers do you say? What do they need? And this is, we have this. It's been next to my uncle who died. It's been my, uh, my, my sister, Jeanette Bankovic, her husband. They use this along his bedside. It's here for you. A lot of people you see just sit there, kind of wring their hands, not sure what to do, who to, what to pray. It's here, all right, along with praying for the deceased and along with other some great um, reflections on purgatory. So it's really um, a powerful book because these prayers that I had I'd taken, learned, and researched at the uh, Our Lady of the Lake Seminary in, in Mondelein, um, the, some of these books hadn't been open for 75 years. And now we have some of the most powerful prayers that um, you can pray for the souls in purgatory. Now, another fruit um, was the Day by Day book. I was reading so much. Oh, I don't have it. It's on the oh, floor. It fell. Oh. Well, there it is down there, guys. It's orange and it's heavy. It's heavy duty. Oh, oh. I was like something. A hand came out of purgatory there. <laughs> <laughs> scared me. It scared me. <laughs> but holy soul has arrived. Oh, my God. So, so here we have this one. I, I call it, it was like having triplets with this book. Um, it took about a year and a half, and this has everything you want to know about purgatory, but we're afraid to ask, and what's in it, scripture, meditations, um, and what I did was, I got from, I mean, I read hundreds of books on purgatory, the greatest writings, so I was able to garner the greatest writings from the greatest thinkers, the philosophers, the poets, the theologians, the apologists, and what they said, and reflections on purgatory, and I read over 100 books to pull this together, they've sold like over 45,000 all these books are extremely powerful, and, and I have the great honor of cardinals and bishops uh, promoting the works. So that's what makes these uh, these works unique. So you know, so I beg of you, not from me, but from the souls in purgatory, that there are a thousand voices um, that are lonely and poor. And why are they lonely and poor? Because they lost the sight of God. And what happens? They experience a spiritual burning, the suffering for God. In fact, there's a museum called the Museum of the Suffering Souls in Rome. Where's the purgatory hand? Oh, got it right here. Uh, so it, I've been there like 12 times. And what it is, there's a mother, Angelica, talked about this on the air. And it's a little museum inside the church dedicated to souls of purgatory. And it's about as long as that wall over there. And they have these relics of souls that visited um, their loved ones, visited fellow religious, visited their parents, and said a couple things about, you know, their experience. Now, what was interesting, there were 25 stories, all different stories, but three concurrent themes over and over again. You would read the story, and it was the same thing. What did they need? Prayer. Masses. Prayer. Masses. Masses. The highest form of prayer are Masses. What, why did they appear? To prove that there was a purgatory, and it does exist. And what did they experience? This burning love of God. And the one experience where the, the, the nun uh, appeared to the priest, he, um, she said, they're not going to believe that you were here. How am I going to convince the nuns to pray for you and offer masses? So he took his hand and he slammed it down on the workbench, and he took his forefinger and he made the sign of the cross. And this is, this is what he left. 
And this is still there till this day. This, it's under lock and key, you can request to see it, but it's a wood bench that they have that you can see the actual burning. Now remember, it's not a physical fire, it's this interior burning for love of God. They burn interior, so when they touched objects that you'll see at this museum, you'll see burn marks on, you know, on a book, on a sleeve, on a workbench. And they cry out, God, God, I must be with God. They need us and they need masses. And, and these are their voices. They say, you know, it's the voice of your, it's the voice of your son and your daughter. It says, have you forgotten me? When I laid my hand in blessing on your head for the last time, you promised never to forget me and to pray for me. For a long time, you, your prayers came upon me like refreshing dew. But now where are you? Where, where is the shirt? Where, why are you gone? Why is it so long? Where are you, why are your prayers becoming so rare? Another voice is calling, have mercy on me, for I'm lonely and poor. Remember, they can't help themselves. They're helpless. The time of merit is over. They're paying off a debt, and they're suffering this loss of the sight of God. My God is the voice of your mother. That voice you surely have not forgotten. So long, oh, so long have I wanted for you, my child, but you never, never come. How many tears you shed for me at my death? Surely your heart has not turned for me now. But tell me, how is it that the angels who bring tokens of love from the living to the poor souls and mark off our time, the merits they acquire for us, how is it they seldom bring me a greeting, a consolation, a gift from you, my child, who I bore beneath my heart, who I sighed even in death, who I think unceasingly even in my torments, do not forsake me. Stretch out your hand to help me out of these flames. Lead me to God and into eternal rest. Have mercy on us, we are lonely and poor. And whose voices are these? Your brother is among them. Your sister, your husband, your wife, your friend, your pastor, your deceased bishop. They all lament and beg, forget us not. To be forgotten is hard, very hard. Remember, not don't remember us with empty reminiscences. And yet another call comes, sadder than all the rest. Have mercy on us, we are lonely and poor. And who are you? We're the poorest of all the souls. No one remembers us, only our dear mother, the church. They, she includes us in her prayers, and we receive a share of the common suffrage of the faithful. Poor souls, have you no one on earth who is near to you? Oh yes, we have relatives, but they don't think of us, much less their own salvation. We have relatives to whom we left money and property, but they never remember those who earned it for them. Yes, I have a son, but he's lost his faith and ridicules purgatory instead of helping his parents. Yes, we have a daughter, but she travels the path bent on pleasure and lets her parents languish in purgatory. All we can do is appeal to you, to you, for we are lonely and poor. And that's the life of the souls in purgatory. So can you remain inactive? Can you refuse their help? Their help, it's so easy to help them. You can help them. They're poor, we are rich. They can do nothing for themselves. We can do everything for them. They can no longer assist at mass and cleanse themselves with the body and blood of Jesus. They can, we can offer the sacrifice. They can no longer eat the bread of life. We can receive it for them in Holy Communion. They can no longer perform good, perform good works or pay their debt by giving alms. We can do it for them. Charity covers a multitude of sins. They can no longer draw from the fountain of grace flowing in the church, but we can apply our indulgences for them. God says to them, to us, have mercy on them, have mercy on these souls whom my justice must purify. Intercede for them, for they can no longer work. Pray for them, atone for them, and in the day of your judgment, they'll remember where you were. They'll remember on May 19th, 2018, Harry and Megan got married. Susan was hanging out in Toronto, talking to the wonderful, beautiful, merciful souls that were living, um, and he will remember, he's going to say, I remember where you were. I remember the day and the time. I remember I was in prison, and you come to visit me. And he says, what at the end? And, and he says, uh, and we'll say, well, when? When did you do this? And he said, you know, when you help the poor in purgatory, when you help the souls of purgatory, you've helped me. You've helped me. So that's the bottom line. So we're down to the end. I have no idea if I went over. I have no idea. I'll take the purgatory time, Henry. I'm not sure. I lost track of time. But um, uh, let me just share uh, just two last things. Can we avoid purgatory? Okay. How many think we can avoid purgatory? Raise your hand. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The rest of you, oh, ye of little faith. Yes, you can avoid purgatory. 
that souls don't want us to go there. They want us to go directly to heaven. How? The masses, the rosary, first Fridays, first Saturdays. Do all your, your power to help the souls. Monthly confession, daily mass. Parents, form merciful and kind hearts in your children so you plant the seed of reverence and in due time, when you're at your deathbed, they'll know what to do. Have learned mercy on them for their lonely and poor. And so let me just end with this. And it's a true story. Um, a friend of mine got hooked on the souls, and she was a volunteer. And she would go to um, uh, to the hospital every twice a week, and she would pass a cemetery. All right, and uh, it was she would call it the No Name Cemetery because there was no sign, and there was just a few stones in the cemetery. So she would say the eternal rest prayer every time going to the hospital and coming back home as a volunteer. After two years, she said, so you know, Susan, I was wondering, did anybody get out? And so as she was, she was driving past the cemetery, she said the prayers and she said, are they helping? And did anybody get out? And as she um, came up to the, uh, she came up to the uh, car in front of her to the stop sign, she looked at the license plate and she looked down and the license plate said this, See you in heaven. <laughs> and I'll see you there. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>